welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. Now in this video, I wanted to answer the question, why do I keep attracting the same partner again and again? And Vedic astrology is such a beautiful system because the system itself provides a very good answer. Okay, why do we keep attracting the same partner again and again? Well, we attract them because we have this thing called the D9 chart. And I'm just going to draw one now. So we've got the D1 chart, which is your birth chart, your natal chart, the physical map of your life you know that's the the big chart that we study and we see what is going to happen or what are the likelihoods or where will your focus be or you know where is your life force predominantly going to be spent this time around okay that's the d1 chart right natal chart and then we've got the d9 chart which is your spouse, right? It's your spouse, it's your partner, it's your future self. You will see that when Saturn matures, and I think definitely when Rahu and Ketu mature, so we've got 36, 42, 48, these are key maturation ages. After these ages, you're really going to start living out your D9 chart. You're going to be this, you're going to become this. This will, the energies here, um, will shine through a lot more so you will experience this whether you're married or not but if you are quite a bit younger you know you're in your 20s and 30s and you're um you're dating people you you know you want to get married so in that time of life you will meet people who embody the planetary energy as dictated here in the D9 chart. So let's say, for example, you are a lady, uh, Aries ascendant, and I'm going to put Venus here in Virgo. Venus in Virgo. And I'm going to put Sun here, Jupiter. Oh, hang on. That's Saturn. We don't want Saturn. I want a Jupiter there. My apologies, good Lord, maybe I have Saturn on the brain for some reason, I don't know why. He's always on my mind, Saturn. He's my favourite, you know that. <laughs> Everybody here knows that, Saturn's my favourite. There's Jupiter, gosh. Right, so, spouse, and I'm not going to say too much. Obviously, when I do a chart reading, I look at every single placement in depth. I'm looking at you know, all the Bala scores and so many, I'm looking at, of course, I'm, I'm looking at all the, every single thing I can get my hands on, okay? So I'm looking at a lot of data. But just for this little example, I'm breaking down here because I want to illustrate some things about this Venus in Virgo and how this can manifest for this lady. So this fictional lady that I have just invented now, she has Venus in Virgo. Aries Ascendant, and the spouse will look something like this. Okay, so he'll be a leader, and Jupiter he, in the fourth, he's a good guy. He's at home, uh, you know, he fixes things around the house, he's very helpful, and he's a good man. He's at home, he's not with other women, okay? <laughs> and let's pretend everything's wonderful here, and he's a really great guy. Okay, you'll also want to check D7 as well, okay? So when I do a relationship reading, these are the three, I check uh, D9 and D7. In a lot of detail and of course looking at these in conjunction with D1 as well but this thing of how we keep attracting the same partner it really does relate to the lessons that we've come to learn so let's take a look at the lessons of Venus in Virgo okay what is what's the deal with Venus in Virgo what do you have to learn there self-worth so you're gonna have a lot of lessons about self-worth and self-confidence and looking after yourself and nurturing yourself and um, people with this can work with this placement and become such wonderful partners because when you've got a challenge when you've got a difficulty in your chart and if you're very determined 
you can learn everything there is to know about that placement and overcome it and turn it into a really beautiful thing. So let's say for example this lady in this example, she has Venus in Virgo, she has to learn the lessons of, um, of worth. And sometimes she attracts a very high flying sun in the 10th house guy. He's, he's the top of his game, professional, loads of money, great guy. She attracts him. Okay, now with this Venus in Virgo and she's got her lessons to learn here, sometimes she'll feel very, um, she won't be confident to keep him. Okay, so she, she might experience this in that way. So anyway, it doesn't work out with him. She ends up with another one. She ends up with another spouse, another person. She, okay, she hasn't married these people. Let's see, she's just dating. She ends up with another person. And let's say he is, he's, he's not quite as high flying as the other one. He's not quite as successful. But yet, that's, she likes that. She actually really does like that. And she projects this D9 chart onto the next guy who's not as high caliber as the last one. Okay, this it can happen that way. And he doesn't feel confident enough to be with her because he can sense that, wow, she's got some pretty big ambitions. She's got some pretty big plans. She's got some pretty big things that she wants. I don't know if I'm enough to be with her. So she's experiencing Venus in Virgo, which is general about the relationship through that way, through the spouse having those feelings of lack of confidence, right? Um, it's fascinating. Sometimes you are projecting this chart onto somebody and sometimes you're attracting it outright. You're attracting the real deal, whatever this is, you attract it. So you can see it also depends on what you've got going on in your natal chart as well. What are the obstacles? What are the challenges? What are the lessons you've come to learn? We'll really see that, I think, from, from D1, but I mean, it depends. It depends. Every reading that I do is so unique and every reading is... Um, you know, I mean, there's so much to look at and I've only just drawn out a couple of tiny little things here as an illustrative example. But I guess I wanted to really show this concept of how this D9 chart, we attract so many people, but yet the same things keep coming up. Why? And the same things, look at that, the same things keep coming up in terms of how she feels about a relationship, just in general, right? The same things keep coming up because those are your lessons to learn this time round. Now, a question can be, well, does that mean, oh, I'm just stuck with this person? What if this person, what if my chart is, my D9 chart is really bad and I keep attracting really, really, really bad people? That's a very good question. I mean, do you keep, um, you know, just do, do you therefore just commit yourself to that person and just be with them and just accept torment for the rest of your life? No, 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 no. Sometimes things keep coming around again because we have to learn the art of refusal as well. I did a video, I'm just looking at the time, I did a video, I did a meditation where I, um, in Ashlesha Nakshatra, I was looking at the energy of refusal and I started thinking about that quite a lot and um, yeah, sometimes it's, it's the way in which we refuse someone, it's very subtle, the way in which we do it makes all the difference. So if you are just rejecting out of um, it's too hard, I don't want to do it anymore, you know, but if that's, that's not a good rejection, that's not a good refusal. If you are refusing someone out of a place of love for the other and yourself, now that's a high quality refusal. And that could be the lesson that you have to learn. And that could very well be the thing that then takes you up to the next level that 
that will open you up to attracting a higher octave of this. If this is challenging and if this has problems in it, know that the more spiritual work you do, you'll attract higher octaves of the same thing, all right? So because every planet, every house, you know, there's good and bad, okay? So it, you can attract higher octaves of this same D9 chart. That's really how I see this. And it's really interesting because the realm of psychology makes you out to be wrong that you are attracting the same partner again and again. And I don't agree with that. I think that's very unfair. I do think that psychology is amazing. And I do, I have seen so many times with people that they've done two years of psychotherapy and it has transformed their lives and they are attracting a healthy partner. And I fully believe in all that. I think that's really great. And that does exist. But, um, but yeah, it, it's, it's a puzzle as to you know, why do we keep attracting the same person. I don't think it's something to punish or feel bad about or um, that you're doing something wrong. How I see it now as a result of being such a student of astrology, what I see is that um, you're doing everything right if you keep attracting similar people. It's, you're not doing anything wrong at all. So I hope that... Um, that this video goes some ways to helping you not beat yourself up if you keep attracting the same person. So important. Recognize that they keep coming back in, probably to show you how to love yourself more, probably to show you that it's loving to, to release the other. You know, sometimes you need to, to let them go for their sake. You know, that you don't want to be angry at them. Maybe, maybe that's the intention. Um, but all of these problems and challenges and things like that, they're all trying to, to kind of, you know, you think about it. You're this person out there and these challenges are, are buffeting you about, but they're trying to get you on course, right? They're trying to get you to the good stuff. So work with your challenges, work with, don't just run away from them because they, the challenges will keep coming back, right? Um, these are not things to abandon or give up on or resist or, and I know, I know what it's like. I know what it's like when, you know, you, there's, you know, there's another D9 around and you're like, oh no, I don't want to go down there again. I get it. I really get it. But now what I say to people actually is I say that when the universe bats you another one, take it catch it take it and work with it don't run away from it and uh, the other bit of advice I like to give people as well if let's say for example they just start going out with someone and you know a lot of people they, they want to uh, they want me to check out someone for them and I can do that but what my ultimate advice is is um, is to enjoy the mystery right enjoy the precious moments of not knowing you know and um, enjoy the mystery don't try to get their birth date and time and details avoid that for a few months get to know the person as a person right just you and the person have some few months of just that and then if it's going great and look up their details you know but uh, you don't you know have an experience live the mystery try you know and have good boundaries because with good boundaries you will trust yourself to explore okay and you'll also trust yourself to get out of a bad situation as well that's really important you know trust yourself that well yeah okay I can I can see what this person's about because I know that uh, you know if it's not if it doesn't feel quite right if I don't see a future here I, I know I can get myself out um, you know I trust myself so very important so you're going to want good boundaries you're going to want to keep the mystery going for as long as you can and you're going to want to recognize that um, that you're either projecting that D9 chart onto someone or they are that D9 chart or there's some lesson that you're trying to learn in your D1 chart, you know. So you've always got access to your own information. So you can always look that up. 
you can always look up and study uh, your side of the tennis net, right? And that's a very um, good practice. That's Jerry Wise. Jerry Wise is a relationship counselor who I've tuned into a lot. I've also studied family systems therapy and all that kind of thing. And um, people definitely talk about staying on your side of the tennis net. So guys, this is about a 15 minute mark. I think it's time for me to wrap up, but I hope this goes some way to answering why you keep attracting the same person. And please don't think it's a bad thing if you do. In fact, it's good. That's what I believe anyway. All right, well, thanks so much for tuning in and I look forward to seeing you next time.